2 Corinthians, and let's see here. Well, I got good stuff here, if I can find it. <clears throat> 2 Corinthians 11, and then 1 Timothy 4, and then 1 Kings. That's about what we're going to cover today. So let's do that. It's good to have everybody with us today. Good to know something. Good to learn something. I'm not done learning from this Bible. I want to know more. Don't be content with what you know. It's like, it's like men with a remote-controlled television with 400 uh, cable channels. Men don't want to know what's on TV. Men want to know what else is on TV. Right? So we sit there and go... And uh, I don't want to know what's in the Bible. I want to know what else is in the Bible. And I'm never, never, never done learning, never done studying. 2 Corinthians 11, verse 13, For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. We're going we're gonna to learn how that works today. Where do they get their inspiration from? <laughs> Yesterday, I sat... Um, and just watched some YouTube videos of deceivers, psychics who deceive people. Don't trust that junk. That is so phony and fake. Uh, even, even if a person, a medium, is actually in contact with a familiar spirit, that spirit is not going to be right 100% of the time. God won't let it. It's going to be wrong, and it's going to mislead and misguide. They, uh, there was this lady I looked about yesterday. She, uh, she had a little shop, put herself out as a psychic. And she would charge, you know, for readings and stuff like that. And... She, she got this young man, she was a young lady herself, and she got in with this young man and got, her, got him to liken her, and then she was doing psychic readings for him all the time. She, he was pulling money out of his mom's retirement fund to the tune of about 400 grand, giving it to her, and then she says to the young man that he's got a curse on him, and she's, she's going to try to lift the curse, but it's going to cost another 500 grand. So he wipes his mom's account out. But the police get involved, okay? And they, put a, they did a sting operation. He said, he told her, he said, meet me at the title company or whatever. And he said, we'll make the, the check transition. And so this psychic now who's able to tell the future didn't know the cops were waiting at the bank, okay, and they arrested her for grand larceny. She had to return $900,000 back that she swindled from this kid. Yeah, what a mess. But I just, I just spent yesterday just watching. Uh, I'm always fascinated with magician's tricks. I, I, I don't practice that. I know a couple little things, but it's no big deal, but but I'm, I'm fascinated at how people, how gullible people really are when it comes to these things. And the, the, sad, the sad part of it is, is that there are more people who are going to be deceived than people who want to actually know the truth and will seek for it. That's, that's scripture, but that, with that, I see that in real, real life. When the Asian nations uh, going into India, China, Japan, Taiwan, Korea, um, places like that, they, they have no desire for Bible truth. They have the yin and the yang. They have their, 
their dragon doctrines, their dragon traditions, things like that. They don't want to know the truth. And uh, so what a shame that is. But there's actually a spirit that works deception. And we're going to find, we're, the Bible's going to let us see how that works, how that's in action. Uh, verse 14 of 2 Corinthians 11, And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Now, last Sunday morning, we were in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4. You can go ahead and turn there, and we'll read this very quickly, and then we'll move on. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly. Uh, the Holy Spirit down here on this earth speaks. He doesn't just give you impulses or emotions. He speaks expressly. It means He's going to slap you around and get your attention with it. The Spirit and it's understandable speech. The Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times, which is where we are, some shall depart from the faith, there's only one faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, plural. Now tonight uh, is going to be part two of devils, studying devils, and who they are, where they came from, what they're able to do, what they're not able to do, and so forth. And then verse 2 of 1 Timothy 4, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. These are these false teachers. They, they'll do this thing, and it doesn't bother them in the least bit. Doesn't bother them at all that they, they deliberately lie to people and think that it's for, it's for the good because they're getting, they're getting rich off of it, and, um, and it doesn't bother them at all. So their conscience... Remember, con your conscience is always going to be a witness. It's either going to be a witness for you, or it's going to be a witness against you. You can have your conscience purged. With the, the word conscience means with knowledge. And what it means is, it's, it's your memory bank in your brain that remembers all the bad, stupid stuff you did. Okay? You know, when you're just daydreaming and you remember something, you, something stupid you did, and you just go, oh. Everybody's going, what's the matter with you? I don't want to talk about it, okay? But anyway, that's, the, and your conscience always witnesses, if you've done something wrong and you're going to lie about it, conscience is going to witness against you. That's what lie detector tests pick up on. Subtle things that your body does to trigger the, the machine to let it know that something is not right in what you're saying. Because your body witnesses, your eyes, your face, your body, everything about it witnesses against you. So when you get to heaven, you're going to take your conscience with you. And your conscience is either going to say, I was with him the whole time. I'm telling you, he did it. He did it. Everything you got in that book, he did because I was with him. I remember every bit of it. You want to hear the details? I know the details. I was right there. That's your conscience. Or your conscience is going to say, yes, he did do that, but... I also know that his name is written in the book of life from the fa uh, of the Lamb from, slain from the foundation of the world and his sins are blotted out. Okay, that Your conscience is going to know that. Their conscience is seared with a hot iron. It's just like my first day at McDonald's. I learned how to sear hamburger patties. They take them frozen metal... <laughs> frozen metal discs that turned into beef magically. And they, we, back in those days, they didn't have the press. They had just the griddle. And we'd lay the burger patties out, salt them, pepper them, whatever. So I think salt them. And then we had, a, we had aluminum deal that we would, I was told to press and circle about three times on each patty. Circle, 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 circle. And I had to do that. You'd be amazed at the intricacy of making a McDonald's hamburger. I only worked there two days. But that's, all, that's what I learned. Sear, sear, sear. And the point of searing that is to keep whatever fat is in that burger patty in there. 
So you have a juicy patty. Greasy. Juice is grease, right? Nothing gets in, nothing, when it's seared, nothing gets in, nothing gets out. So their, their conscience gets seared, and they can do wrong and pass a lie detector test and doesn't bother them a bit in the world that they took some widow's last dime. Jimmy Swaggart did this back before his fall. And I've told this story many times, but it just fits. Uh, a widow, you know, he was going around, Mr. Hotshot, preaching this and that and the other. And a widow gave Swaggart Ministries everything that she had in her will. And she willed over something like $5 million to Swaggart Ministries. Her children called Swaggart and said, Mom wasn't thinking right in the last days. And she sent you all this money, but she left us completely out. And we're going to ask you to send that back. We'll have an executor. We'll give you a portion. But we, we, don't, we, we, we just barely had enough to cover a funeral. Anyway, so Swaggart said, absolutely not. I'm keeping it. Okay. And so they sued him and lost the lawsuit. So he kept that money, and then it wasn't too long after that that he got caught with hookers, okay? And his conscience seared with a hot iron. He can take that widow's money, not think anything of it, okay? Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, Commanding to abstain from meats, which God has created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. Now, last, last Sunday we talked about doctrines of devils, seducing spirits. So, here's, ha, here's the devil has helpers. He is not, Satan is not omnipresent like God is. Satan cannot be everywhere all at once, like God can. He wants that power, but he can't do it. So he has a network of evil angels. And we're going to, I had a guy write comments on YouTube this week, just, he just disagreed with everything that I said last Sunday night, teaching about devils. And he's dead wrong. He, he said God did not create bad angels. That's not true. And I'm going to show you the scripture. God said this, all right? So here's how this thing works. So turn to 1 Kings 22. 1 Kings 22. There's this story. Man, I, I listen, I'm telling you, your Bible is the window to a world that your eyes cannot see. But God wants you to know these things. And so if you'll read your Bible... You'll, you'll, get, you'll get things like this, and you'll understand things that other people will not understand. You'll understand how the, how the spiritual realm works around you. There's always going to be a tug-of-war going on over you. You know this picture of a, bad, of a devil on one shoulder and an angel on the other, okay? That's not too far from being true. Because you will have the aid of ministering spirits, benevolent angels that aid us, that go before us, that protect us. But then you will have the oppression of malevolent spirits, evil, bad, vicious, mean-looking spirits. And there are, there are angels who cannot lie. There are angels who cannot tell the truth. Okay, and here, here's, we're going to have a story here. So, uh, let's see, 1 Kings, I'm in 2 Kings. Let me get back over here, Mike. 1 Kings 22. This is about Ahab. Ahab's, Ahab's just fixing to be sent to the slaughterhouse. He's going to be killed. God's going to set it up. And now, the, this is in the divided kingdom of Israel. The, the kingdom after Solomon died, in the days of Rehoboam, Solomon's son, the kingdom was divided and divided in two. You have uh, Judah and Benjamin to the south, 
And you have the other ten tribes to the north, and their capital was Samaria. So the king, uh, Jeroboam, built a, a palace and built a temple there, and he had two golden calves there and all this stuff. So anyway, so the, the nation of Israel, had a, they had a civil war, and they split. And, but at this time, Jehoshaphat, who was the king of Judah, down in the south, He's thinking, you know, maybe if we work with Ahab, we won't get slaughtered so bad in the next war that comes out. So Jehoshaphat is thinking about this in his mind. Now, Jehoshaphat is one of these kings that he knows, he knows God, and he wants to do God's will. And so when he's with Ahab, he hears something out of Ahab that does not sit right with him. Because Jehoshaphat goes to Ahab and says, I know there's this big war coming tomorrow. Before I get myself and my army involved, I would like to hear from God on how this thing's going to turn out. And Ahab said, I got that. I've got 400 men that will prophesy what God says. So one of them made a pair of iron horns. And he said, see these iron horns, Ahab? God has shown us that with these horns, you're going to push back the Syrians and you're going to get the victory. Ahab says, see, this is God. Oh, amen. Woo. Hallelujah. Shonda Latoya. Jehoshaphat, his spirit, doesn't, it's not sitting right with him. He's going, is there not anybody that can tell me actually what the Lord said. Is there not, Ahab, is there not anybody else? Ahab said, well, I got this one guy. I don't like him. Well, why not? He never tells me what I like to hear. Who is he? It's Micaiah. We'll bring him on. So, uh, let's pick it up. Verse 15. So he came to the king, the king said unto him, Micaiah, shall we go against Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall we forbear? And he answered him, Go and prosper, for the Lord shall deliver it in the hand of the king. And the king said unto him, How many times shall I adjure thee, that thou tell me nothing but that which is true in the name of the Lord? And it looked like there, Micaiah is being sarcastic. He's saying, What did they tell you? I mean, that's what you're going to believe anyway. So that's kind of what I get out of that. And so finally, verse 17, he said, I saw all Israel scattered upon the hills as sheep that have not a shepherd. And the Lord said, these have no master. Let them return every man to his house in peace. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, did I not tell thee that he would prophesy no good concerning me but evil? He made negative confessions. He did not say positive words. He, this is not, Micaiah did not write your best life now. So I don't like him. He doesn't tell me what I want to hear. And so, um, verse 19, he said, Hear thou therefore the word of the Lord. This is what's up on the screen. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne. This is Micaiah talking. Now you underline this passage in your Bible. Make notes around it, whatever you got to do. So you know where to go to next time. This, this, something's going to come up. And you're going to try to understand what's, being, what's going on in the background. Because I guarantee you, you, you need to understand this. Every lost person, every lost person, they are led about by evil spirits. The Bible says in Ephesians 2, verse 2, The prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. What that means is that in every lost person, there is a spirit that works in them and through them. They will, they will set you up. They will betray you. They will deceive you. They will act like they are your friends. They will act like they're close family members. They will act like they're on your side. They're going to turn you in one of these days. They're going to turn you over. They're going to go against you or whatever. They're, it's a set up is what it is. There's, there's, there's going to be two groups of people in this world. Those who are Christ and those who are not Christ. And 
people, we're going to be as far away from them as heaven is from hell. And that's how, this is how we need to be. But this, this is God opening up the windows of the spiritual realm to show you how this works. How is it that these, that these televangelists lie so much? How is it that they have all these, these fair speeches that they make? How is it that the doctrines of different religions in the world really draw and, and attract people to them? How is it that this works? And so he said... Hear thou therefore the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne and all the host of heaven, angels, standing by him on his right hand and where? On his left. Now I just, I'm guessing, based upon Matthew 25. But in Matthew 25, the sheep are on the right hand, the goats are on the left. So I got it in my mind that the good angels are on the right hand and the bad ones are on the left. Okay? It's kind of like the home team crowd versus the away team crowd okay so anyway in verse 20 and the lord said who shall persuade ahab that he may go up and fall at ramoth gilead and one said on this manner another said on that manner so god has already got it in his mind that he's going to have ahab deceived but god cannot lie God cannot lie, but he doesn't need to because he has enough angels that will lie for him. They're just ready to lie. They're just waiting to lie. And you see in, in verse 20, you see no real uh, lack of any angel offering their opinion on how it should go down. So then, verse 21, there came forth a spirit. And stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. And the Lord said unto him, wherewith? Or, how are you going to do it? And he said, I will go forth. And I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, thou shalt persuade him and prevail. Also go forth and do so. If God had not approved the plan, the devil would not have been able to do what he wanted to do. There were, in the previous verse, there were other spirits that had a different idea of how this was to be done. They wanted to do it, and God said no. And so therefore, they didn't do it. And you need to understand this. God knows the hearts of every human. He knows whether that heart really wants to be told the truth or they just want to believe lies. God knows the difference. God knew Ahab. God knew his wife, Jezebel. God knew that Ahab was to be turned over so he could fall and die according to the word of the Lord. You see, God had already prophesied how Ahab was going to fall and die at Ramoth Gilead because he said, Ahab, in the place where you had Naboth stoned and killed, in that exact spot, the dogs are going to lick your blood up. Brother Kelly preached a message called When Dogs Bark. Is one of the worst messages I've ever heard in my life. And by that, I mean it was hard to listen to. Because he said, here's Ahab, and he's walking down that garden of herbs that used to be Naboth's vineyard. And all of a sudden, in the cool of the evening, he could hear dogs barking in the background. And hair stood up on the back of his neck. Because he remembered the word of the Lord that said, in the spot that you had Naboth killed, the dogs are going to lick your blood. And he said, every time Ahab heard dogs bark, he thought, uh-oh, well, this is it. This is it. And he preached this message about how God will remind us of every wicked, evil, nasty, vile thing that we've ever done. Because the dogs will be barking on us. And I'm not kidding you. I listened to that for a while and had to shut it off. And Lisa and I were driving late, late at night, trying to come back home from a conference. 
And for hours down the road, I was, I was, I was reconfessing every sin that I'd ever done. Things go all the way back to my childhood, candy bars I stole from Wilbert's Meat Market. Years ago, I was confessing to God, please forgive me for that one too. I mean, I was, I mean it was just coming out of me. And, uh, but anyway, but here's the thing. God is always in charge even of all the deceptions. Those who want to be deceived, God already has angels, spirits, that are willing to deceive those who want to be deceived. He said Babylon has been a golden cup in the Lord's hand. And God will pour out lying spirits upon mankind. He, will, he is the one that will release certain spirits to lie to certain people or to be in their mouth when they tell the lies. So whenever you're watching YouTube or you're listening to something on Christian radio or whatever and you hear it and it don't sound right, it ain't right, where did it come from? It came from lying spirits in the mouth of those men or women who are teaching garbage, teaching nonsense, teaching things that are not biblical. Where do they get it from? They get it from seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. So this... This spirit said, I'm going to go and be a lying spirit. All the mouth of all the prophets unto Ahab, I'll, I'll be in their mouth, and they're all going to say the same thing, but it's going to be a lie. So God said, prevail also, go forth and do so. Now verse 23, now therefore, behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these thy prophets, and the Lord has spoken evil concerning thee. But Zedekiah, the son of uh, Chinana, went near... And smote Micaiah on the cheek and said, Which way went the Spirit of the Lord from me to speak unto thee? In other words, he's mocking him. Micaiah said, Behold, thou shalt see in that day when thou shalt go into an inner chamber to hide thyself. The king of Israel said, Take Micaiah and carry him back unto uh, Amon, the governor of the city, and to Joash, the king's son. And say, Thus saith the king, Put this fellow in the prison. Feed him with the bread of affliction, with the water of affliction, until I come in peace. That's going to be a long time because Ahab's not going to come back. The next day, Ahab died just exactly the way God planned it, just exactly the way God said it. Because he was somebody, one of, one of the opposing armies went, shot an arrow just at a chance. And that God guided that arrow and it went right into Ahab. And he slumped over in his chariot. And when they found him dead in his chariot, they took him out. And as the guy was washing the blood out of his chariot, the dogs were standing there licking the blood up. And that was the exact, I'm going to tell you, it happened exactly the way God said. Listen, your Bible is right in everything that it says. Trust only the Bible, nothing else. If they speak a word and it's not, in direct um, agreement with every word of God, it is a lying spirit. Okay? Now, um, some, of these, some of these faith healers that are on TV, do you know that they have plants? And I'm not talking about potted plants. I'm talking about people in the audience that have been planted who pretend to be sick. Do you know that? They do. It's been confessed. It's been admitted. Okay? Magicians will have plants in an audience. Okay? They will have plants in an audience. They will have somebody in the audience, and the magician will pick... Some, I'm going to pick somebody from random. Uh, you, young lady. Well, that lady's on this guy's payroll, and he's picking her because she's part of the act. The Dixie Stampede does that. I, I recognized it. Because you remember the disappearing lady? They pull out of the audience. She just disappeared. Next time we went, I'm going, I'm looking for her. And here, here she comes. And she sits down in a certain seat. And they pick her out of the crowd. Because she act like she's walking away. Uh-uh. I'm going, I got them. Okay? These faith healers, they will plant people 
in the audience that are sick or pretending to be sick. They will pre supposedly heal them and then pass these Kentucky Fried Chicken buckets around for money and draw in millions of dollars every year from fakery. Now, is that a spirit? You better believe it is. It doesn't matter if, it's, if they actually have some sort of mystical power or they are just lying through their teeth. It is a spirit that is guiding them to do that and to get away with it. And because most people are so gullible, even the educated ones who say, I, I won't be deceived by this, they'll fall for it. They'll fall for it. Because a spirit will hold power over that person because they're lost. They don't believe the Bible. Okay? So you're getting this, this picture right here. You're, God is showing you a film of what the spiritual realm looks like and what happens when the Mormons, Jehovah's Witness, the Roman Catholics, and then all the fake phony churches everywhere, you now understand what is going on with them. They didn't come up with these lies on their own. They were fed these lies. A spirit went in their mouth and said these words. Okay? And what a shame that people believe them, but that's exactly how it works. Now, turn to Psalm 58. In the serpent's mouth, in Satan's mouth, God designed serpents, some of them, to be deadly, to kill you. I was told, I went with my boys for their hunter safety course, and I was told in one of those courses that there were no deadly snakes in Missouri. As far as I'm concerned, every one of them is deadly. Thank you. I don't care if it's a black snake. Black snakes don't bite folk and kill them. I don't like them. I don't want to see them. If they have a purpose on this earth, then that's all fine and dandy. They'll eat vermin. They'll eat other snakes. I get that. Praise the Lord for it. I just don't want to see them. But I don't mind watching them on YouTube. So I kind of know how, how it works a little bit, okay? You know that passage in the scripture where it says, Hell hath enlarged herself, okay? The serpent with a head that big, how it can eat a fawn deer. It will enlarge itself. Detachable jaws. Actually, not detached, there's a tendon that connects the jaws together, and that tendon can stretch way out there. And that jaw, both jaws just kind of separate, but they're held together by this tendon, and they'll just separate. And however big that animal is, or that pig or whatever it is, it's eaten. It's going to take it all in. Okay? So. You know, I'd, I'd study them a little bit just to see how they operate. But they, they have venom. They have poison under their tongue. And God designed it that way so we would understand the false teachers and the false prophets. They have poison. Poison is in their mouth. Psalm 58, verse 3. The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. Some people say, oh, I don't believe that people are born inherently evil. That is, that is in direct contradiction to the Word of God. My children were born evil because their mom and daddy was born evil. And my mom and daddy was born evil. And their mom and daddy was born evil. Okay? They, we, we go, listen, nope, I did not have to teach my children how to lie. My mom and dad did not have to teach me how to lie. I knew how to, I figured it out. Tell, tell, don't tell the truth, you get a whipping. Tell a lie. Cover yourself. So verse 4, their poison is like the poison of a serpent. They're like the deaf adder that stoppeth her ear. Adders and serpents generally do not have ears. You do not see big floppy ears on a snake sticking up like this. 
Okay, they don't have them. So, and, the, and God's right, they eat dust. They lick up dust. The, they, don't have a, they have a nostril, but they don't smell the scent with their nostrils. They detect what's going on by dust particles in the air. When their tongue comes out, that's what they're doing. They're, they're sampling the air, and when they get the odor of, a, of an animal of some kind, dead or alive, they're going to zero in. They'll be able to find it every time. They're going to zero right in on it by use of their tongue. They're literally licking up the dust of the earth. So that's, but anyway, the idea is, behind this is, is that in the mouth of false teachers, false prophets, false churches, false Bibles, false movements, whatever it is, poison is what's coming out of the mouth of these teachers because there's a spirit in there. It's a, spirit of a, it's a serpent spirit. And the things that they're going to say to you is not going to give you life. It's going to bring you death. Psalm 140, turn there. Same thing, double witness. Psalm 140, verse 1. Deliver me, O Lord, from the evil man. Preserve me from the violent man. You ought to pray this every now and then. You ought to open your book, Bible to the book of Psalms and just point to it and just say, God, do this for me, please. God, please don't let anybody lie to me. God, please don't let anybody deceive me. Please, God, don't let me, don't let me go off uh, on some wild, crazy nut thing that's on the Internet and make me believe it. God, don't let me, don't let that happen to me, God. Don't let me tell a lie. Don't let me do this. And you ought to just, you ought to just say, deliver me, O Lord, from the evil man. Preserve me from the violent man. Which imagine mischiefs in their heart. Continually are they gathered together for war. They have sharpened their tongues like a serpent. You know, the, the Indians, the Native Americans, knew the white man would speak with what kind of tongue? Forked tongue. What did he mean by that? He says one thing, but means another. A forked tongue. They have sharpened their tongues like a serpent. Adder's poison is under their lips. Selah means pause. Think about it. Meditate on this. Think on these things. The false prophets, they will use Jim Jones of the people's church the people's temple he used magicians conjuring tricks to make people think that he had powers from god he used magicians tricks and he had plants in the audience that he would supposedly lay his hands on them and heal them and then most of them were women and he would lay hands on them later of a different kind but he he used conjuring tricks and 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 deceitfulness in order to draw people to, to follow him all the way down and drink his Kool-Aid. Okay? And people accuse us or me of being a cult leader. And all I'm doing is telling you, believe the Bible. Believe the book. Believe the Bible. Don't believe, listen, don't believe a word I say if you don't, if you don't want to. Run away from me. Get a thousand miles away from me. And cut off your internet and just sit down and read your Bible and say, God, I believe, every, I believe every word that's in this book. I don't trust men. Their tongues are like serpent. Their adder's poison is under their lips. When they speak, they're going to bring death to you, not life. They're going to kill relationships. They're going to kill your finances. They're going to, they'll steal your money. I better quit. Father in heaven, straighten our minds out. God help us, dear God, to detect and to see the deceitfulness that is in this world. The deceitfulness that is maybe, Father, in, in people's own family members. The deceitfulness in our children. The deceitfulness, Lord, in our own hearts. Help us to understand, God, that in our flesh, our flesh is wicked and it's got adder's poison. And God will say things that, that are not true to people. God, we're wicked. God, have mercy on us, forgive us, and chastise us, Lord, for telling things that are not true and for speaking lies and hypocrisy. And God, Lord, help us to have a heart that doesn't want to be lied to, that wants to know the truth. And Father, I believe your word is the truth. And God, you're laying it on my heart to preach this in Kenya. And God, Lord, just prepare the way. 
Father, for those people, Lord, and, and anybody who will listen, God, to understand that this Bible is right in everything it says. Thank you, God, for it. Thank you, God, that, it, that we have found one thing in this world that will tell us the truth every single time. Our journey's over, God. We're done searching for where the truth is. Now help us to search out where this truth is found in the, in the Word of God. Bless it, Father, we pray in Jesus' name and all of God's people said, Amen. Amen.